But I guarantee you, if we had stayed in California, knowing what I know now, <laughs> whoa, someone got shocked. We got 15 chickens there. We got 25 chickens there. We have about 30 chickens here. We need to move these guys out, but we have one chicken that has been trouble walking. So I think it's best when you have a chicken that you're unsure of, of their health, I think it's best just to put him out. We don't know if he has some kind of weird chicken disease that might infect the rest of the flock. Um, so what I think is just common sense is just put him out. Um, the chicken's very small. We wouldn't eat it anyways. And also, it doesn't look too good. Come on, little guy. And that's just it. You just have to put a chicken out of his misery sometimes and then just toss it, throw it in the compost. And we're gonna bury it. Just turn this, some of this up. I fill up this little trough, put some grit in there. When we try to have the chickens with grit 24 seven, cause I feel like it makes um, a better bird or actually a bigger bird. All right, everyone else is looking healthy and strong. No issues with anybody else. And then we have about two more weeks with these guys. Oh boy, look at that guys. We got some more meat chickens. Just picked these guys up from the post office. And now we need to put them in here. Oh, we got more in there. We got 15 Cornish crosses in there. Seven. And the Cornish crosses are not quite ready to be put out on grass yet. The Cornish crosses are the ones that we got as a replacement for McMurray Hatchery. And these Cornish crosses are three weeks old and they're probably ready to be off the heat lamp now that it's warmed up. I haven't seen any that died, which is good. 41? Yeah. All right, 41 chickens. We got more chickens. We usually get 30, but I called the hat tree and be like, hey, can you send us 10 more? Uh, only because, you know, we've been losing some here and there. Plus, we're feeding Lorraine's parents, <laughs> and they're here now. We're raising meat chickens for them also. So we have 55 chickens in here. <laughs> oh boy. Penelope's dipping their beaks in there to make sure that they know where their water's at. I just got the call yesterday that they shipped these chickens and they came the next day. Which they usually don't come maybe on the third day. That's a, that's a plus because I think some folks have been having trouble with meat chickens or just chickens in general uh, shipping in the post office where they just don't make it. Uh, we lost 10 last week and they didn't even make it to the post office because they all 10 died. Um, so to get these the next day uh, is a good thing. And these are Murray's Big Red Broilers, the Red Birds, uh, which are our favorite meat bird. And these are more of a darker meat, and these are the same meat birds that are out, the big guys that are out in our chicken tractors out there. I didn't intend for that many chickens to be in here. Um, only maybe about 30, maybe 40 chickens. Things happen. You lose chickens, then, then they send us a little bit later, two weeks later. Oh man, I just realized that we have 105 meat chickens right now. All at once. <laughs> All right, Penelope's making us breakfast. What are you making, Penelope? Um, bacon, eggs, and potatoes. Ooh, I like that bacon. Not having the potatoes. Still doing the carnivore diet, but I could have meat and eggs. Hey guys, we're doing something. Not too different, we do this often, but I like to do it when the chickens, the meat chickens are a little bit older and they're a little bit bigger. We're gonna put a net around them. First we need to move them. We got some good rain last night, which we needed. Oh, 
using a pig netting that I had that I'm not using right now because I've used this pig netting before. Now, I wouldn't use this pig netting on egg layers, but for meat chickens, well, especially Cornish crosses, Cornish crosses will not fly over this thing. At least I've, I've never seen it. They're too, they're too big, they're too lazy. But what I've never done is do these red broilers from McMurray Hatchery. Those ones are a little bit more acting like chickens, so I'm not sure if they'll actually fly over this. This netting is a little bit more easier to handle. I mean, it's a lot easier to set up than the bigger chicken netting. This used to be our fire pit, um, and then when we first moved here, it was a big pile of trash from the previous owner. I've been trying to knock this down and hopefully they'll, maybe they could do that. Because really chickens are pigs with feathers anyways. And actually when I first started here, um, that's why I, the reason why we have these certain type of chicken tractors, the Scovich chicken tractor, is because I never had netting to do this type of thing. And so I felt like the chicken tractors were bigger so that way the chickens can stay in there and don't have to let them out. This has been charging in the sun. I'm still gonna electrify it, but with Cornish cross chickens, <laughs> you don't really need to because they're just so lazy. We got a ground post in there. We're gonna set that to ground. Then we're gonna attach this other piece right there. Let's turn it on. Let's see how they do. I hope they don't fly over, but we're gonna test it out, see if they will. All right, big meatballs. They're free now. They got shocked right there. They got some room now to to forage, guys. All right, you guys be good. Hey guys, this is a great option if you have a little yard or if you don't have that much space and you can't move meat chickens every single day or twice a day, this is a good option for that. You can get one of these Premier One electrical nettings, you have a chicken tractor, and you could still move the chicken tractor within square. Or say if you have a nine to five job and you just can't move chickens every single day because you just can't, maybe just on the weekends, maybe during the week you do this. This pig netting is 30 inches tall and 100 feet wide. But I guarantee you, if we had stayed in California, knowing what I know now, whoa, someone got shocked. I would have definitely be doing this. I'd be doing this in my front yard. I'd be doing this in my backyard. Look, the Cornish crosses, see that one just sitting? All the Cornish crosses usually just sit down and that's all they do. But these guys are a little bit more active. Also, we don't have aerial predators. I mean, we do, and I've seen them, and they fly over, but we don't, it's not really a problem. So if you have aerial predators, that might be an issue. We have two more weeks with these guys, and I really could just leave them in the spot for the next two weeks, and they'd be fine. Um, but I may move them again. We'll check on them a little later. And really, it's just kind of testing out to see if they will fly over. I hope they won't. Oh, what happened, Lorraine? I was out in the garden yesterday and some of you might know already that I'm allergic to spider bites, spider and ant bites, like highly allergic. And so I just got off the phone with urgent care. We did a virtual call and um, like whenever I get bit by a spider, like the swelling is intense and I start wheezing and my chest is tight and so um, I finally talked to a professional about it because there's I mean this is like really bad the swelling immediately started like as soon as I got bit it was immediate anyway I might have an EpiPen because <laughs> I don't know what to do like I'm in the garden and I'm, I always get bit by spiders and my allergic reaction is so intense how many spiders you got bit last year? Was it like seven? I think it was seven. It's gonna get hot this week. We gotta get these guys some more fresh air. 
it. You guys look alive. If you could, if you could just dump it on that white tarp down there. Oh yeah, okay. I appreciate it. We got our compost, guys. Three yards of compost. Let's see if this guy can make it up this hill. They're usually afraid to come down here. Come on. <laughs> Needs a head start. Come on. You can do it. Yeah. Woo! He did it. <laughs> That's why my wood chip guy will never drive down here because they're afraid of getting stuck, so they have to deliver wood chips up on the hill. My compost dealer is now bringing that little 4x4, some black gold. So we're getting going on the garden. Slowly but surely, we'll get this thing planted. Ooh! Come on. Come on. I'm shooting for about 160-ish. That's a thick piece of beef, so we're at 140. And for the girls, we have some rice, some curry. Cooked it till temperature, and then now we let it rest. How's your knee doing? Uh, swelling is still there, and it's pretty painful still, so I'm just putting some charcoal on it, and I took an Epsom salt bath, and I'm about to make me a ginger tea. So Lorraine's resting now. Hopefully she feels better by tomorrow. Bernice! Hey Bernice! Fuzzy! What's up? Penelope's usually in charge collecting eggs. You collect the eggs every night, Penelope? Yeah. Well, we forgot to do it yesterday, so... Okay, who's that? Delilah? Yeah, that's Delilah. She's still broodery. You're gonna be hatching those eggs soon, I hope. There you go. That's quite a bit of eggs there. Yeah. Good job, Penelope. All right, check on these ones too. We can still gotta check on the big guys out there. We're just making our rounds tonight before bed. They're starting to get a lot of their feathers in. I think they're looking pretty good. Definitely got our hands full with this over here. We got to shovel this stuff out, which we should be used to that. We do that every year. So every year we get compost. We're gonna put it in this area for sure, and then use it to fill in the holes as we plant into that plastic out there. And then also we have the brother's garden over there, which will be all of our pumpkins and squashes. How does that feel between your feet, Penelope? Feels really good. <laughs> Oh, big meatballs. How are you guys doing today? So during the day, this whole area is not shaded. So they were definitely in the chicken coop because it was shaded and cool in there and they weren't getting beat down by the sun. So they were pretty much just laying out. So now it's before bed. And we wanna get these guys back in the chicken coop because they might not get it at first that that's their home. So we're gonna feed them. So this is a good spot right here, guys. If you have a small yard in your front yard, I think that would be awesome <laughs> to be growing chickens in the city in your front yard. But it can be as simple as this as raising meat chickens. And then tomorrow, I'll probably move that over here and let them out again so they can just have access to more free range. All right, Penelope. Yeah, good job. 